Hi, welcome to the No Problem Chinese podcast. For our first episode, we're going to talk about the Chinese language, writing, and speaking, and some of the learning strategies that have been effective uh, for myself in learning the language. And also, we're going to take a look at some points of interest and historical sites around China. Many people have a misconception that the Chinese language is a difficult language to learn. Most of this comes from the fact that the writing system is very different than the Western writing system. In the West, we use a Roman alphabet to combine different sounds to create words. However, the Chinese language is basically a pictographic language. Each character represents a picture. For example, this character, Yuan, this represents a person. You can see here, it's a picture, and here's the two legs of the person, and there's the torso. And many other characters are derived from the simpler character to form more complex ideas. For example, taking the character Ren, if we simply add one more stroke to this character, we can change the meaning of it. Now, by adding one more crossing stroke, we've changed the meaning of this from person to big. To kind of help illustrate the pictorial nature of Chinese characters, I've put three different characters up here on the board for you to compare. Here we see a character. This is a character for mountain. If the pronunciation is Shan. This is a picture of a bird. Okay, the pronunciation is Niao. This character is the character Dao and it combines both the bird character and the mountain character. And this is basically showing a bird sitting on top of a mountain. This represents the idea of an island. Now you've probably heard many people say that Chinese is a tonal language. Basically what that means is that the emphasis that you place on words while speaking can greatly change the meaning of the words that you're saying. So when learning Chinese language, it's not only important to listen to what people say, but it's also very important to listen to how they say it. The map you see on your screen shows the cities we will visit in our virtual tour, and we will highlight some significant sites. Beginning our virtual tour in Beijing, Tiananmen Square, which is located in front of the Imperial Palace, was great historical significance in Chinese history and is typically the place where the emperor would address people during ceremonies and holidays. The imperial palace, called Gugong in Chinese, is the imperial residence in historic China and is today still home of the legislative and ruling body of the Chinese government. The Temple of Heaven, or Tian Tan, is a ceremonial site in ancient China and was the place where the emperor would offer gifts and sacrifices to the gods for a bountiful harvest in the coming year. The Summer Palace, or Yihuyue, was the imperial summer residence of the emperor and is still a popular tourist destination. It's common to see Chinese calligraphers writing Chinese poetry and water on the sidewalk for the tourists. One of the most famous sites in China is the Great Wall. It covers vast swaths of land across the northern reaches of the country, and the site in Beijing, known as Badaling, is one of the more famous areas that tourists go to view it. Now traveling out of Beijing to the southwest, we find Xi'an. Xi'an is one of the former imperial capitals of China during the first emperor of China's reign. We have the site known as 
is Bimayon, or the Terracotta Warrior site. These are stone replicas of the Emperor's army and are meant to accompany him into the afterlife. Now moving to Shandong province, we come across the city of Chufu. Chufu is famous in China as the birthplace of Confucius. It's also home to Mount Tai, which is one of the five holy mountains in China. Traveling further south, we come across the city of Hangzhou, capital of Zhejiang province. Hangzhou has a rich history throughout China and is famously one of the cities that Marco Polo traveled to in his journeys around Asia. The most famous site in Hangzhou is Xihu, or West Lake. It's a very popular tourist attraction that people around China travel to. And on warm, clear summer days, many throngs of tourists gather around the lake to take boat rides across or to go shopping to try some of the specialty food around Hangzhou. Hangzhou is also famous for silk production and tea production. In the westernmost section of China, we find Tibet, Xizang, is nestled in the foothills of the Himalayas. Located in the southern part of the country, we find the picturesque riverside and mountain town of Yangshuo, located in Guangxi province. Yangshuo is nestled along the Li River, in Chinese, we call this the Lijiang. The Li River is famous in China and is one of the longest rivers in the country. Yangshuo is most famous for the karst mountains that populate the area. These mountains are often a popular landscape that painters use in some of the most famous Chinese silk paintings. Finally, in the southernmost part of China, we come across Hainan Island, in Chinese, Hainan Dao. Hainan is located in the South China Sea and breaks the mold of what we typically expect to find in Chinese cities. Hainan is surrounded by beautiful white sand beaches and rainforests, as well as central highlands. A rich biodiversity of life can be found throughout their many nature reserves and volcanically fed mineral springs can be found throughout the island. I hope this virtual tour of China has piqued your interest in learning the Chinese language and hopefully you will be coming to China to visit and see these sites for yourself. Hopefully you join us for our next episode where we further examine other aspects of Chinese language and Chinese living.